How long you lived in this town, Captain McVeigh? <laughs> I was born and raised here, Duke. This city, with all its houses, palaces, steam engines, cathedrals, and tumor. What is it but thought? Millions of thoughts made into one. Not a brick was made, but what some man had to think in the making of that brick. What's all that about, Captain? Hmm? <laughs> oh, just a little something Carlisle said years ago. Yeah? Wonderful man, Carlisle. Was he ever on the force? Uh, no, I don't believe he ever was, Stephen. Here. Now listen. You give this fresh water every day for six days and it'll take root. Then you'll have a bowl full of them. Same as I've got. You like flowers, don't you, Mac? Like them. <laughs> I love them. I should think a guy like you, with all your years in the force, that you'd retire. Take a trip around the world like them ads I read in the magazines. Too late for all that now, copper. All this is in my blood. Yeah, I guess I carried on through the last journey with me. Whichever way I'm headed. Hey, 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 just a minute. You're getting all mixed up, copper. That belongs on the DA's files now. Let me tell you, for your information, Jimmy Horton's handling the case. But she's been missing for some time, ain't she? She was. We found her. Found her? Dead. Just dandy. That's what I think, too. Oh, it's you. Nobody else. Um, do you mind if I sit down beside the next district attorney? <laughs> oh, thank you, Jimmy. You're always so sweet. Look, did I tell you to print that? Oh, let me see. Did you? You know darn well I didn't. But the idle girl was found dead, wasn't she? That part's all right, but what do you mean by saying that I thought she was murdered? Oh, didn't you say that? No, I didn't. Oh. Well, that's easily fixed. Now, let me see. Uh, to James J. Horton, the up-and-coming assistant district attorney, emphatically denies that Thalia Arnold was murdered. I do nothing of the kind. Oh, I wish you'd make up your mind. This is getting so confusing. Now, in your opinion, was this girl murdered or wasn't she? It must have been one way or the other. Now, come on, give out. I'm giving out with nothing. Not even a cup of coffee? No. <laughs> then how about your having another? Hey, you know, you put me in a fine spot by breaking that story. I'm in for a bowling out from the DA himself. Well, I'm sorry, Jimmy. I'm not kidding. But, but if I can't get my news from you, I have to make it myself. That's my job. Look, how can we apprehend criminals for crimes committed when you news hounds insist on printing articles that impede the wheels of justice? Oh, bravo, bravo. That was well spoken. You can kid all you want to, Nora, but this is a serious matter. Oh, well, I think you'd get a lot more action if old fossil foot McVeigh and his bloodhounds would wake up. Look, you leave Captain McVeigh out of this. Oh, well, we're just not going to quarrel about this. What are you doing? Just trying to sweeten your disposition, dear. Hey, you are, Joe. $22,000 and 500. Read it and smile. Hmm, 22,500, eh? And that ain't hay, as he used to say on the other side of the tracks. Well, I'd admit it's a pretty healthy profit to make from the Crescent School of Arts. That's why I wonder you keep on with this kind of advertising. 
What kind of advertising? This. The Crescent School of Fine Arts. Radio, screen, drama, modeling. Fit yourself for a career in any of these professional big money earned while waiting. <laughs> Phone AB 470. You know, I used to think that the profit you make from your nightclubs, numbers, slot machines, and your gambling houses, you'd be content to let things slide as they are. New faces, Joe. New girls, fresh talent and youth. It never fails. That's what I need in my nightclub. With me, it's just a matter of business. I'm after the money, Joe. Money and plenty of it. Now, girls only interest me from a standpoint of profit. Remember that. Don't touch me. Don't come near me, do you hear? Keep away from me, you beast. Keep away or I'll scream. Please, please let me alone. I'll do anything you say. If you'll just stay where you are. Me? Yes, I was. How do you like my dramatic acting? If that's dramatic acting, I'll take fish. Say, what do you mean by that? The Barrymores, all three of them, have nothing to worry about now. Listen, baby, if you'll take my advice, you'll leave that dramatic hokum to somebody who can dish it out. Yeah, well, it's for real drama. Is that so? Well, I can vibrate as good as you can any old time. Why don't you get wise to yourself and use your ability to please King Peterson? That's where your salary's coming from. Yeah? And King's gonna pay plenty for a long time to come, drama or no drama. I didn't hear you come in, King. You're telling me. And I'm telling you this is the last time I'm going to warn you to keep your big mouth shut. I didn't mean anything by what I just said, King. Honest, I didn't. I was only kidding to get her eyes out of Helen, that's all. Is that a fact? Yeah. Yeah, honest, I was only kidding. Well, leave my name out of your kidding the next time you feel the urge to turn comic. I get into your street clothes, you've got a job to do. Here's the keys to my car. Understand? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And here's something else for you to understand. The girl that had this job before you thought she was pretty wise, too. Get what I mean? Yes. That's fine. And you? Who, me? No, a dame in China. That's nice, opening a laundry. Smart girl. I'll do until somebody smarter comes along. What's on your mind, or are you afraid to tell, teacher? Mason wants you to get over to the Crescent Studio right away. What for? He's interested in a new girl, I want you to rehearse them. He's not the only one interested in those new girls. Meaning what? Meaning one of the boys was over from the DA's office today, prowling around and asking plenty of questions. Oh. One of Jimmy Horton's men, eh? That's the way it added up to me. I think I'll go over and pay Mr. Horton a nice, friendly little visit. Good idea. <laughs> now, now, Mrs. Randolph, take it easy. Take it easy. I just can't help it, Mr. Horton. I just can't help it. My grandchild, Pauline. She's the only thing I've got in the world. Yes, yes, I know, but if you want us to help you, you must get control of yourself. Yes, yes, I'll try. I'll try. Here, here let me have your handkerchief. There. Now give me a nice big smile. Hmm? <laughs> you will answer our questions, won't you? Yes. I'll try. I'll try. But you must remember I'm old. And things do get so mixed up in here. Yes, well, you sit right over here and we'll have a nice, friendly little visit. <laughs> and here's the tea I ordered. Tea? Tea. Sure, tea. My old mother always said there's nothing like a good strong cup of tea to help people remember things. <laughs> now let's start at the beginning, shall we? I think I can save you a lot of questioning, Jimmy. Yes? Here's the case as it stands. Now, Pauline Randolph has never left home before. 
And her grandmother naturally is afraid that something serious has happened to the child. Isn't that right, Grandma? Yes. Yeah. I, I can't understand it. Sugar? Please. One. Two. Thank Three? You. No, thank you. No. <laughs> Pauline was always so sweet and so thoughtful and knows how I worry when she's away from home, even for a short time. Oh. How long since you last heard from her? Oh, oh, it's been a long time. Well, perhaps she's staying with one of her girlfriends. No. Oh, no, I know she isn't, or she'd have phoned me. She hasn't been to school either, so her teachers say. Do you know of anybody whom she could have eloped with? Eloped? I, I mean, run away and got... Girls do that sometimes, you know. Oh, no. I don't think so. Everybody loved Pauline. Oh, lots and lots of young men called on her. Oh, Mary, did you say? Well... I mean, can you think of any other reason why she should run away? No, I don't know. Oh, that's just it. Every time I try to think, oh, my head just goes spinning and I can't remember a thing. Only that, the... oh, she disappeared. Oh, 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 oh. Now, 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 come along, come along, now, brace up, brace up, brace up. And I give him my word, we'll leave no stone unturned to find Pauline and bring her safely back to you. Isn't that right, Jimmy? That's right, Captain. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Horton. All right, that's all right, Mrs. Randolph. I'll have one of our cars take you home, and Captain McVeigh will notify you as soon as we have any news. We oh. will have good news, I'm sure. Oh, I hope so. Oh, by the way, do you have a picture of Pauline? Oh, I forgot. Isn't she pretty? Just like her grandma. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I keep this? No, not if you want it. Did you ring, sir? Oh, yes, Larkin. Will you see if Mrs. Randolph reaches home safely? Yes, sir. Come along. Sweets for the sweet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you again, gentlemen. And Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, here's another one. Why do parents wait days or even weeks before they report their children missing? No, it isn't so much the disappearance of the girls, Jimmy. It's what happens to them after they disappear. That's a tragedy. Yes? King Peterson in the office to see you, Mr. Horton. Have him wait. Watch your step with him, Jimmy. He's mighty clever. There's not a gambling house, boogie joint, or shady nightclub that we've raided in the last few years that hasn't had King Peterson mixed up in it, one way or the other, all along the line. All that evidence in your pocket, you should have tagged him long ago. <laughs> it isn't so easy, son. He's got a keen mind and a crooked soul. That's what makes him really dangerous. Here, you talk, Mac. You'd think he'd already put the finger on me. I wouldn't put it past him. Why do you think he's here to see me? Well, maybe about Lloyd Burke. You know, we're still holding him for the Arnold murder case. We're we going to have to let Burke go. No. Lack of evidence. Oh. Send in Mr. Peterson. Hello, Harden. How are you, Peterson? You know Captain McVeigh, of course. Oh, yes. Hello, Captain. I, I didn't see you when I came in. Perhaps my eyesight's getting a little faulty. Maybe I need glasses. That isn't all you need. <laughs> really? What else do you suggest? 
You and I could never agree on that, Peterson. <laughs> Still the same old McVeigh. You know, Captain, you should have retired a long time ago. Mm, yeah, I've thought of that. Maybe I will, but I've just got one more job to finish. Huh. Sort of a last fling, eh? Mm-hmm. Mind telling me what it is? No, not a bit. I'll send you all the information by a special messenger. Take care of yourself, Peterson. I always do, Captain. And you know it. Mm-hmm. So long, Jimmy. That's why I'm here, Horton. To take care of myself, as the captain suggested. Sort of reversing things. My paying you a visit instead of you calling on me, as usual. It's very considerate of you. I appreciate it. Oh, I know you would. Do you mind if I smoke? I don't care if you burn. <laughs> That's a nice, friendly little thought, Mr. Horton. Oh, uh, do you smoke these? I never smoked that brand. Too bad you don't appreciate good tobacco, Horton. Because your men have been prying into my business of late. That annoys me. I don't like being annoyed. That so? Just why does your department keep butting into my affairs? We were very interested in your affairs, Mr. Peterson. Why? For a number of reasons. But in particular about the Arnold girl who was found dead on the old river road. What my showgirls do when they finish work has nothing to do with me. I'm their employer, not their guardian. Does that make sense to you? Peterson, some of those missing girls work for you. This office intends finding out what happened to those girls. Does that make sense to you? Definitely. And here's a little thought I'll leave behind for your information and your guidance. You're not the first ambitious young man in that chair to annoy me. As a matter of fact, yours is the third name I've seen on this door. You know, you ought to be on the stage, Peterson. Why? Because you'll give a swell performance. So do you, Horton. And I hope the curtain doesn't ring down on you before you've finished your act. Thanks. So you didn't like his brand of cigarettes, eh, Jimmy? No. It was a $10,000 bill in that cigarette case. Ten thousand? You. His price must have gone up since he offered a cigarette to one of my boys. Yeah, he's mixed up in this racket somewhere if he's willing to pay off with that kind of money. Yeah. Our job is to prove it. Yes? Recovery report is happy to see you, Mr. Horton. That takes me right out. So long, Jimmy. So long, Mac. Come in, boy. What's the news, Horton? Come on, come on, give us a door. What's up? Will you? Well, here's the story of another missing girl. Missing girls? That's no news. You find one. That'll be news. We want to know what Peterson was doing here. What have you got on him? Peterson? Oh, well, uh, just uh, dropped in for a cup of tea. Tea? What'd you do, give him a cookie with a razor blade in it? Oh, that's a sharp remark. Now, look, fella, seriously. There's nothing in particular to tell you at the moment. Hey, what are you doing? Holding it for the page girl in the Times record? She broke the last big news out of this office. She didn't get it from me. Take my word for it. I guess we'll have to. Now look, you fellas cooperate with me and I'll do the same with you. That's a deal, Horton. Let's go, Junior. So long. Bye, boys. I'm sorry if we can't do any business, Lawrence. We could, Mr. Thompson, keep your actor's salary somewhere within reason. Real talent costs money, you know.
Now there's a girl I'd like to book in one of my shows. Not a chance. You can't hire her. That's my daughter. She's a newspaper woman. Oh. Well, I'll check with you again, Thompson, before I leave town. Come in, Nora. See my secretary. Thank you, Dad, for my beautiful birthday present. <laughs> so, I have to buy my kisses and hugs, huh? Oh, now, you know a lot better than that. <laughs> There's one with no strings attached to it. Oh, that's more <laughs> like it, Nora. But I came up to ask you a favor. I thought there was a catch in that kiss somewhere. Well, how much? Oh, it's not money I want. It's information. You know, the managing editor thinks I'm doing a wonderful job. Good. Then I suppose he gave you a raise. No. No, not exactly, but there's a promise of one. That's if I can locate some of the missing girls. Now, uh, Dad, have you ever heard of Josie Rogers? Why, yes, but uh, I didn't book her act. Well, uh, how about Lillian Andrews? Oh, I haven't seen her for two or three years. Well, uh, uh, did you ever book Thalia Arnold? Thalia Arnold? Isn't that the girl that was found dead last week? Yes, yes, she's a singer and dancer. No, she never worked from this office. Well, you certainly are a big help. I guess I'll have to get my information someplace else. Well, I wish you luck. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I think I'll need it. Well, see you tonight. Bye, dear. Is everything all right, Pauline? Yes, Grandmother's very happy about it. Oh, that's just fine. Good afternoon. Are you Mrs. Randolph? Yes, I am. Well, my name is Nora Page, and I'm from the Times Record. The Times Record? Yes, yes, the newspaper. Oh, yes, to be sure. I came to talk to you regarding your granddaughter. Oh, won't you come in? Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> now, uh, who did you say you were? Nora Page. And, uh, I want to help you find your granddaughter. Oh, that won't be necessary now. Pauline came home this morning. Oh, was that she who just left? Yes. Where has she been all this time? Oh, she has a wonderful job. She's so happy. Oh, won't you sit down? Please. I just love to talk about Pauline. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look. She gave me this new pocketbook. Oh, that is beautiful. <laughs> uh, where is she working? Oh, she's learning to be an actress. Is that so? What company is she with? Oh, uh, I don't know. Oh, she was so excited she couldn't tell me, and I forgot to ask her. Well, uh, how did she get the position? Do you know that? Oh, yes, I know that. Uh, some time ago, she met a, a Miss Arnold, and uh, she introduced her to a wonderful man, uh, the gentleman she's working for. Who is he? Oh, um, I don't know. 
But he must be a wonderful man. Just think, her little girlfriend, Mary Phillips. She's on her way to pick her up now, and Mary is going to work for the same man. Where does Mary live? Oh, I can't say. I, oh, I see. Well, uh, uh, did you mention this to anyone else? No. No. Uh, not that I remember. Oh, well, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Randolph. I, I appreciate it. No, please don't get up. I'll just go. Goodbye. Bye, Miss... Uh, oh, Miss... Uh, well, uh, thanks for calling. Not at all. To Mr. Mason's. She's an actress. How do you do? An actress? Gee. That's what Pauline and I want to be. We've dreamed about it ever since we were children. And now we have our feet on the first step of the ladder to fame. That's right, and someday you'll even have your name in electric lights. Well, come on, girls. We've got to hurry. a while while I get this thing ready and we'll take the picture. Isn't it wonderful, Mary? It's just like a dream. <laughs> That's what I thought when I first came here, too. Don't move now. Get ready. Hit it. One, two, three. Oh, you moved. Now, wait a minute. We'll have to take another one now. Just remember that pose now, please. I'll have to look in here and see. Where you're going. Can't you see I want a four-big Santa Pop thing with the corners of the thing right in the head? What did you say? I said I want a four-big Santa Pop thing with the corners of the right in the head. Say, listen, wise guy, another crack like that, you'll end up with this sticking out of the top of your head. Oh, I'm sorry. I was interrupted for a moment. Uh, what was the act you wanted? The act's all right. Now, how about the money? Five hundred. It's like stealing. I'll take it. You can drop the contract. Good. All right, girls, get into your street clothes. Look here, Horton. You've got to get me something more definite than that on this missing girl problem. Understand? I understand, Mr. Fowler. Well, I'm glad you do. Remember, I'm accepting no more excuses. I moved you up to be my assistant because I thought you had possibilities. But I'm doing my best, sir. Well, I'm sorry, but your best is not quite good enough. Every newspaper in town is hanging around my neck. And the grand jury is after my scalp. Results. Results. That's what I'm after, or else. Yes, sir. How did you get in here? I didn't climb in through the transom. How is happy little Jimmy Horton today? You ought to know. You just got the lowdown. And what a story that'll make for tonight's edition. Quote, District Attorney threatens to oust James Horton, his very special assistant. Unquote. Listen, if you print a story like that, I'll take you out someplace and lose you. Whoa, that'll make the headlines. Quote, Assistant District Attorney not only fails to find the missing girls, but loses one. Unquote. All right, go ahead and razz me. I can take it. <laughs> it's awful decent of you, Jimmy. <laughs> Just for that, I think I'm going to help you out. Yeah, out on my left ear. Look, why don't you leave me alone? You're a nuisance. Did you ever hear of nuisance value? <laughs> I have it. I'll trade information with you. Give you news regarding the missing Randolph girl. If you'll give me an interview with Louis Burke. Louis Burke? Mm-hmm. It's a deal. What about her? Well, she's home, safe and sound. And what more, she's working and got her job through Thalia Arnold. <laughs> That's giving you quick action, isn't it? How did you find out she was mixed up with Arnold? Grandma told me. And now you just sit down and give me that order to interview Louis Burke. 
I don't have to. I'll give you his address. What do you mean, address? I released him. I might have expected something like this. <laughs> May I use your telephone? No. Thanks. You were always so obliging. Now look, you're not going to run things around here just because you're assigned to this office. Oh, but I like being assigned to you. It has possibilities. Hello, here's the final on that Pauline Randolph story. Yes? Here, Pauline, put your mask on. There. Now show Mary a couple of steps. You know what to do. Well, first of all, you put your hand this way. And your other hand in your hip. And then you twist on your toe. Like this? Uh-huh. And then... Hey, boss, wait a minute. Oh. What's the idea of the big SOS all of a sudden? Thompson's in my office, ready to chew nails. What about it? About this. Did you see this headline about the Randolph girl? Of course I did. Well, that's what's got Thompson in an uproar. Forget it. I'll take care of it, Thompson. Come on. Want to see me, Joe? Yes. Did Arnold bring this Randolph girl into our school? Maybe she did. So what? Captain McVeigh was in my office. I think he's trying to connect Arnold with some of those missing girls. And we've got to do something about it. Okay, Joe. What do you want? Get this Randolph girl out of town. Change her name. Book her with some act in some other city, even if we've got to pay her salary. I can't see why you're taking such a personal interest in all this. Maybe you can't, but I can. I have my own reasons for not wanting my name connected with this outfit. I told you that when you came to me for money to start this place. Look, this school develops talent. Girls come to us for jobs and we see to it that they get them. Perhaps we do send a number of them out of town to work. Is it our fault if they like the climate and don't come back? Well, I don't like the climate around here. So get that Randolph girl out of the school. Okay, you're the boss. Hmm. Excited, wasn't he? Yeah. Pauline will do for that special act tonight, Kate. Clear him out. Wait a minute, King. I want to tell you something about that Randolph girl. What is it? Have you been talking to her? Talking how? Have you given her much of the inside? Inside of what? You know what I mean. Come on, Kate, put your cards on the table. What's it all about? Well, what she said to me a little while ago makes me believe that you've been doing too much talking. She's learned a lot of things about your rackets, and she's beginning to blab. Thanks for the tip, Kate. No worry, I'll take care of it. I bought a new fast lens. I took some pictures of your floor show without a flash bulb. How do you like them? They're fine. They're fine. Look at these swell pictures Shaw took with his new camera. Give him a raise. Where's Mason? He's in there. Continue putting on your coat, Mason. You're taking a little trip to the DA's office. 
Jimmy Horton wants to ask you a few questions. About what? Oh, I think he wants to know if you take cream in your coffee. Come on. Cream in my coffee? Nora Page, give me the desk. Here's a follow-up on the Randolph story. I'm at the Crescent School of Fine Arts, and Captain McVeigh just picked up the managing director, Dandy Mason. Hey, you can't do this to me! But on my own phone, too! Hey, take it easy, take it easy. Don't you know a lady when you see one? Here. Step on that, Mason. Thanks, Dugan. Dandy Mason's questioning at the DA's office, yeah. Hello? With me, it's just a matter of business. I made up my mind to that when I was a kid and had to live in squalor and poverty. Stop being evasive, Peterson. You know more about what happened to that Randolph girl than you've told me. I've told you all that I know. How do you like it, Joe? That ought to pull a man, huh? Will you forget about that display board and come down to earth? I tell you I'm through. I'm going to close this school. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Joe. The DA's office has located Mary Phillips. And if she talks, you and Mason are going to be dragged right into the middle of this killing. And if that happens, I'll be involved. What's so terrible about that? You know better than we are. Maybe not. But when I went into partnership with you, I didn't know everything about your racket. What are you worrying about? The police have got nothing on us. Yes, but you don't understand. I, I have a daughter. Well... You've certainly kept her undercover. Well, I only wanted to make sure that she didn't... that she didn't know anything about my association with you and Mason. Oh. Not good enough for her, eh? You don't understand. She's the only thing in the world that means anything to me. Can't you realize the situation I'm in? Sure. As long as our little rackets didn't cause any commotion, you were willing to take your share of the profits. Well, you're going to take your share of the trouble, too. Win, lose, or draw, we're in this thing together. Don't ever forget that. Yes? Captain McVay just came in the house, King. He's on his way upstairs. Okay, Trent. I mustn't let him see me here. All right, if that's the way you feel, you can go out there. At least to a garage next door. Hello, man. What are you doing, stepping out? No, you are. Any particular reason? No. Jimmy Horton wants you to pay him another little visit. By request this time? Mm, yes, you would like, by request. So, what is this, trying to collect insurance? Come on, think fast. Bad habit of mine, emptying ashtrays in a waste paper basket. Will that do? Well, it could be better. Come on. <laughs> go on, Mary. What else? Well, I finally decided I'd go with Pauline and learn to be a professional dancer. I knew Mother wouldn't like me to do that kind of work, so I had Pauline pick me up. And did she? Yes, sir. There was a blonde woman in the car with her. Have you any idea who she was? No, sir. Well, Pauline said she was an actress friend of Mr. Mason's. Oh. Well, perhaps Mr. Mason can tell us the name of the blonde actress, can you, Mr. Mason? Well, uh, that's rather difficult. Uh, in my business, I meet a great many uh, blonde actresses. Yeah. Just what is your business? I, uh, operate the Crescent School of Fine Arts. We instruct and supply talent for entertainment purposes. There were pictures in your files of girls who are now listed as missing. I'm not responsible for the girls after they leave my school. No. Found in the rooms of two of the missing girls were contracts showing that they worked for Mr. Peterson here. That's quite possible. Have you ever seen this gentleman before, Mary? Yes, sir. He was in the studio the day I went there with Pauline. Mr. Mason was with him. Were you introduced to him? No, sir. But Pauline seemed to know him. She said he was to call at her about a rehearsal for our act. I'm always on the lookout for artists. New talent, new dances. Thought I might audition the girl for a new act I was planning. 
I telephoned Mason and checked with him, and he told me the girl had left earlier with an unidentified man. Yeah, that's right, and she seemed very nervous and upset about something. Did Pauline say anything to you about changing her plans? No, sir. She was still at the school when I left. All right, Mary. That's all, and thank you. Police matron will take you home. Thank you. Any more questions you want to ask us? Not right now, Peterson. But don't think this closes my investigation. Well, gentlemen, it's been a very interesting evening. Both of you drop around to one of my nightclubs sometime and catch the show. You might find a couple of missing girls. Yeah. That's an idea. Idea's right, Mac. I'm going to raid every one of his places until I find that blonde actress. Come on, girls, get in your coats. You're all going to take a nice little ride in the wagon. Come on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? I want to get a seat. I had to stand up the last time. Oh, yeah? Well, there's going to be plenty of room. Get going. Come on, all of you. Stop. Get into it. Come on, snap into it. Come on, move, move. That goes for you, too. Come on, hey, come hey. on. Hey, hey, what's a gag? There ain't nothing in this show that's indecent. Take him along, too. Come on, come on, all of you. That's it. All right, next one. Come on, snap into it. Turn right, turn left. What do you want me to do, go into my dance? Shut up and move over. Next one, come on. The next one, turn right, take your hand down. Turn left, move over. The next one, the next one, I said, come on. Turn right. I said right, lady. Left, move over. Is that the girl, Mary? No, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Next one. Come on. Come on. The next one. Turn right. Turn left. Stop chewing gum. Move over. The next one. Come on. Come on. Come on. Turn right. Turn right. Turn left. Mary, are you sure that none of the girls is the actress who picked you up in the car? I'm sure, Mr. Horton. All right, you can... That's all, girls. Step down. Yes? It's King. Oh. So you finally decided to pay me a visit. You're looking swell, Kate. Don't hand me that. Listen, I'm getting tired of hiding out here like a she-hermit. What about some money? I want to get out of here. That's just why I came to see you. I've got a job for you, and there's plenty of money in it. Job. What are you driving at? If I go to work on a show, I'm a cinch to get picked up at the cops and thrown the nearest clink. <laughs> I'm not that dumb. You're telling me. Oh, uh, try one of my brand, Kate. And, uh, what do I have to do for this? You always wanted to prove you were a great actress. I'm going to give you that opportunity. Only this job isn't a show. A famous case of Jaunders versus Jaunders, made famous by Charles Dickens, pointed out the amount of red tape which continues to find inside this famous litigation. But in the end of the chapter. Hello? Yes? Yes, this is Jimmy Horton. If you'll come to the park lane, Apartment 702, alone, right away. I'll give you plenty of information about Pauline Randolph. Who is this? Never mind who this is. You'll know I'm on the level when you see me. I'm on a spot, and I'm scared, and I'm ready to talk. What color is your hair? It's blonde.
Yes? I'm Jimmy Horton. Oh, come in. I'm... I'm sorry to call you so late. Oh, you needn't worry. There's nobody around. Make yourself comfortable. I've got a lot of things on my chest I think you might be interested in. That remains to be seen. What about Pauline Randolph? Mm, take your time. We'll get down to business in a minute. Have a drink? <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Horton, for being so clumsy. If you'll excuse me for a minute, I'll get into some other clothes. Perhaps that would be better. How to do? Mac, what are you doing here? Oh, just taking the air. You weren't following me by any chance, were you? No, not by any chance. You old war horse. <laughs> Mac, did you see a blonde come out of here? Ah, oh, besides so blondes you've got in your mind, eh? Just one. That ought to be enough. I think she's the girl we've been looking for. Fine, where is she? I don't know. She fell in my arms and then disappeared. She what? Yes, she was going to tell me about the Randolph girl. Well, she didn't come out here. She went out the back way. Dugan would have made a date with her. Say, let's check up with the manager. Well. A gentleman rented 702 some times ago for his sister, but I've never seen her around. Yeah, do you remember what he looked like? I really did not pay much attention. There were so many vacancies, and I was anxious to rent the apartment. Who lives in that apartment across the hall? It is empty. Hmm. Open it up. That's strange, Mac. Lights are on when I left here. Put them on again, buddy. Get in my little. She's dead, Jimmy. Oh, this is terrible. The murder in the park lane. We lose our best standings oh, for the year about. Shut up. Go down and tell that officer at the back door to come up here. David. Oh, c'est terrible, terrible. Qu'est-ce que je vais faire? Qu'est-ce que je vais faire? Well, what do you make of it, Mac? Jimmy, you've been framed. Framed? Did you and McVeigh accomplish anything last night when you found that girl dead? No. You haven't yet uncovered one bit of convicting evidence that would lead to an arrest or the solution of this missing girl's problem. I can't perform miracles. Maybe not. But unless you get me some concrete results within the next few days, I'll put somebody in here who will.
Yes, sir. Get me Captain McVeigh. Yes, sir. Hello? Horton? Yes, yes, this is Jimmy Horton. How'd you like your photograph? Hey, what's the gag? It's no gag. Lay off or that picture will show up on the front page of every paper in town. Operator. Would you please finish that dunking and give me the story you promised me? Now, what time did you arrive at the apartment? What apartment? Aren't you going to tell me what happened last night? No, 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 this is it's just a human interest story. Oh, all right then, go ahead. Well, once upon a time, a big city brought together a boy and a girl. <laughs> Love at first sight, I suppose. Uh-huh. Love at first sight. Only they didn't know it. So far? Well, it's a little bit old-fashioned, but it never fails to sob stuff in the Sunday edition. Just go ahead. The boy stood a good chance of going places, but the girl interfered with his success at every turn. Still like it? The story's all right, but don't you think she's a little bit dumb? Oh, yes, 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 definitely. You see, she was just an ambitious little newspaper reporter. She never stopped to think of the harm that she might be doing. Now, wait a minute. You wouldn't be referring to me, would you? Maybe. And I suppose the boy is James Horton. Could be. Well, how am I interfering with his work? Those newspaper stories of yours. Do you think they're doing Jimmy any good? Thanks, Captain. Right. Oh, it's you. Well, it certainly is. What do you mean by hanging up the telephone on me? I didn't want to talk to anybody. Not even you. Well, that's not surprising. Well, well, a new romance. Yeah? How'd you like to have that for the front page of your paper? You recognize the girl, don't you? Yes, it's Kate Nelson. Right. And here's that big story you've been looking for. Quote, assistant district attorney was found in the apartment of Kate Nelson a short time before she was murdered. Unquote. How do you like that for a headline? And, uh, I suppose you had this picture taken just to prove that she was a very close friend of yours. Go ahead and razz me. You won't have another chance after tonight. I am resigning. Why? Because if I don't get some convicting evidence in a couple of days, I'm fired. If I go ahead, that picture will be plastered all over every paper in town. Jimmy, this is the 
woman that I saw driving away in that car with the Randolph girl. What? Then that means she was with Pauline when they picked up Mary Phillips. What did you do with the picture I gave you of Pauline? Oh, what could that do? I wrote the license number of the car down on the back of that. There it is. What is the matter? You're trying to stay out of sleep. Hello, Mac. Well, bye bye. I'll see you later. Hey, where are you going? We're going to get convicting evidence. Even if I have to be one of the missing girls myself. Now, wait a minute. Come back here. Uh, Mac. Mac, wake up, will you? Wrong number. Oh, Mac, stop the foolishness, will you? I'm prowling around here for at this hour of the night. Well, now listen, Jimmy. Can't a fellow get a few seconds rest without the entire district attorney's office come barging in on him? I want to go to sleep. Yeah? Maybe this will wake you up. Oh, where did you get that? I found it on my desk this morning. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I tried to, but I couldn't get you. Well, what do you think of it? Boy, what a pose. Snugglebug Horton, that's what they'll be calling you. Oh, Mac, lay off the comedy. This is serious. If you were a gangster and you wanted to frame somebody... Uh, well, I'm not a gangster and I don't want to frame anybody. I want to go to sleep. Mac, this is important. All right, I am a gangster. I don't want to frame somebody that don't want to go to sleep. All right, now, who would you get to take a picture like this? A photographer. Oh, Mac, you old war horse. I'm serious. Well, it's a cinch I'd get somebody I knew well and could trust. Oh, let here. Uh, well. Is Jimmy Horton there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's here. Hello? The numbers check perfectly. It's Peterson's car that's in the Royal Garage. I get you. Royal Garage. So long, Butch. That was Nora. I can't believe it. But she's got a perfect check on the car that picked up the little Randolph girl before she was killed. Who do you belong to? Peterson. Now you're the little snuggle bug. Go to sleep or mom will spank. Oh. Good night, Mac. Hello. McBay talking. Is Duke in there? Now give me a lock in. Well, I think we can take care of that right away. Oh, Mason, this is Miss uh, Charmaine. Thompson recommended her to me. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> well, so Thompson's recommendation is good enough for me anytime. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear you say that because I need the work. Oh, uh, this is Miss Helen Whitney, Miss Charmaine. Now you go with her and she'll give you a couple of rehearsals and explain what's expected of you. Well, that suits me, thanks. If you make good, you stand a chance of leaving town with that unit. Looks like Thompson sent me to the right place. <laughs> it sure does. Now, you two girls run along. I want to have a little talk with Dandy. Oh, thank you. What did you say that girl's name was? Anita Charmaine. You mean Nora Page of the Times record. Are you kidding? <laughs> Far from it. And that's only the half of it. 
She's also Joe Thompson's daughter. Joe Thompson's daughter? Yeah. And a reporter on the Times record. <laughs> well, that's one for the books. You suppose she has any idea that you recognized her? No, I don't think so. Only met her once before. Devil-crossing rat. What's Thompson trying to get away with? Can't you see? He's getting ready to squeal. He planted his own daughter here to get the lowdown, so when the payoff comes, he can save his own hide. I better tip off Helen. Now, wait a minute. Take it easy. It's a showdown that Thompson's looking for. I'll give him a show that he'll never forget. I won't do no talking to nobody. Honest, Bill. King ought to know that. You gotta believe me, Bill. I won't tell anyone I took the picture. Honest, I won't. Ah, quit yapping. Come on. We ain't got all day. Walk out of here like nothing's wrong or I'll let you have it. All right, boys, the show's over. Gee, I'm glad you're here. You saved my life. Come on, fall in. Hello. I might have expected something like this. Some more McVeigh's work, huh? Yes, sir. Where's the old war horse now? He's waiting over in your office, Mr. Horton. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? I tell you, I don't know anything. Then why did you suddenly quit your job at the Crescent School and drop out of sight? The doctor said I needed a rest. <coughs> You weren't by any chance afraid of King Peterson, were you? Uh, I hardly know him. Then where were you going with these two? They both work for Peterson. Uh, I was going to take some pictures of them. Oh, then they're both your friends, eh? Yeah, they're my pals. Well, Jimmy, I'm afraid you've made a mistake. Yeah, I guess we'll have to let him go, hmm? I guess so. <laughs> You mean you're going to release me? Sure. <laughs> we haven't got a case against you. You can all go. Thanks. Come on, Bill. Now we can make them pictures. You can't! You can't tell me loose with them! I won't leave this room! You can lock me up! There's no charge against you, Short. We can't hold you. Okay! I'll talk! Put me in jail where I'll be safe. Go ahead. Lock in. Lock those two birds up. All right. Why were you going to be bumped off? Because, because I knew King Peterson murdered Kate Nelson. How do you know he did it? After I took that picture of you, I, I sneaked across the hall and, and gave King the negative. What became of that negative? I, I don't know. After you left, Kate started quarreling with King about some money. I, I went into the hall. Go on, go on. When I got into the hall, King came out of the door carrying Kate into the apartment where she met you. I got scared, so, so I beat her down the fire escape. You remember ever taking some pictures of some young schoolgirls who were later reported missing? Y yes, lots of them. What happened to those girls? They were... They were come on, come on, speak up! They were booked in out-of-town nightclubs under assumed names. with you out of town, boys. You don't know the real thing when you see it. Now, there's an act that'll get plenty of results. I'll give you a hundred and a half a week with a four-week guarantee. I'll give you two hundred. Nothing doing. If that act isn't worth three hundred bucks, I might as well get out of business. What do you want me over here for, Peterson? Joe, there's an act turned up today that's going to be sensational. I told you I was through with this sort of thing. I know you did, Joe, but I want you to get a flash of this one. She's dynamite. Now, we told the boys that you were her agent, so you handled this deal right. And I won't ask any more. All right. I'll look her over. That's well. If anybody told me I could learn this without six easy lessons, I wouldn't have believed them. You're a natural, dearie. Here, let me put this on and we'll be all set to go. Oh, why the disguise? Just one of the rules of the organization. Girls here must sell their ability, not their look. Well, that's a very nice idea. <laughs> OK, we're ready.
bad, eh? She looks very good to me. Well, you meet her. Sure knew their business. <laughs> you think I land that spot in Las Vegas? You're a singe. Peterson tells me the big boss is handling this deal himself. You play your cards with him and you're in. <laughs> 350 a week and a railroad ticket one way. What do you say, Joe? It's up to you. You want to sell the act to Lawrence for that kind of money? I don't know. Reputation of his night spot is nearly too healthy. Well, it is for me. Well, what do you say, Joe? What's the answer? Well, the girl's willing, it's a deal. Have Helen bring the girl into the office and continue with the acts. Come on, Joe. Joe, are you sure there's nothing I can say to make you change your mind about pulling out? No, Peterson. When I sign for this act with Lawrence, I'm through. And that's final. All right. That's the way you feel about it. Thompson, I want you to meet the young lady that does the most sensational act you've ever sold down the river. Dad! What's the meaning of this, Peterson? You ought to know, Thompson. You sent your daughter to me with a letter of introduction. You're crazy. I never gave any letter to you. Why, you're the last person in the world I'd want to mix up with. No need to lie. He's not lying. I wrote that letter myself to prove your connection with this racket. Oh, looking for newspaper headlines, eh? Well, you'll get your headline. Well, you didn't know your father was connected with this place, did you? Do you know how your headline will read? Nora Page, girl reporter, missing. It's going to be the other way around, Peterson. Wait a minute, Joe. What are you going to do? I'm going to call the police. Say, wait a minute. What is this? Wait a minute, Mason. You're under arrest. Pardon? I warned you to lay off. Put him up. Nice work, Jimmy. Nice work. Get up, you. You haven't got anything on me. I killed him in self-defense. Yes. I've known for a long while that you were the brains of most of these rackets, and that Thompson was nothing but one of your unfortunate victims. We've been feeding you rope, my friend, and now it's long enough to hang you. But I'm innocent of killing him, I tell you. I said the rope is long enough to hang you. Come on. But I'm innocent of killing him, I tell you. Well, what do you think of it? There goes my last newspaper story, Jimmy. You know, once upon a time, a big city brought together a boy and a girl. Love at first sight, I suppose. Like the story so far? A little old-fashioned, but good. 